Hey everybody, today we are going to look at this uh, BenQ HT2050 DLP projector. It's a decent projector, actually it's a, it's a nice projector. Uh, 2200 lumen, there's the uh, zoom and focus stuff. It's 15,000 to 1 contrast ratio, native 1080, and the lamp life is uh, 3500 in standard, 6000 in eco, in the proper conditions of course. Most of that's marketing baloney, in my opinion, but just to give you an idea of what we're working with. Now, the complaint on this one is unusual. Uh, it's a little over two years old. The um, It works, but the uh, supposedly the picture... What do they say here? Lighter color circle on right side of image, more visible in a dark image. So there's some sort of circle on one side, apparently. Not sure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let's see, let's get a, I'm going to go to YouTube on the laptop and let's just find a, let's just find a black image. They do say a dark, here we are, 10 hours and one second of pure black screen. All right, so let's, oh, let's fire it up. I'm gonna put it in theater mode. Full screen. There we are. All right, so get this. Uh, let's drop that leveling foot down. Yeah, focus it a little too. All right, so let's switch to. PC. It saw the, it detected the source there. All right. I don't need that stuff up. Let's go back to theater mode. Hmm. See, to me, I think that looks fine. Or if he's got a screen problem. Or maybe we just need a uh, night time. Let's see what we can find here for night time. Something dark. Try this one, maybe. And I'm going to turn off the uh, background lights. All right, so now we have no background lighting. Keystone's off, but I do not see anything. Let's, uh, and we'll go full screen this time. Ah, right there. There we go. Starry night. That might be really bad. I'm hoping see it up here too yeah, I'll bring the camera over see that and that this uh, starry night as pretty as starry night is it should be black 
well, those lines are the damage monitor, don't worry about those, but it should be a black image. And instead, we have either dust, or what I'm starting to suspect are bad pixels. I hope not. But it sure looks like it. See when I put the pointer? You can still see it. It changes as I go past, I'm trying to get it to possibly flip. But this looks like a bad DLP chip. Let me go turn the lights on. Alright. Even with the lights on, you can still see it. I'll zoom in. And that is usually caused by a bad DMD. And here, it could be dust. Because I did have to throw it out of focus. All right, there it is back. It's all the way to one end of the focus. So I bring the focus all the way over. It shows up here. Let's see if you can still see it. Maybe it's on, I can't tell on the screen. There it is. So in the focus is all the way up. You can see it, and when it's not, it's all the way, you go all the way down, you can't. That might be dust, but I, I seriously doubt it. I'm gonna do a, uh, we're going to have to open it up and actually look at the chip itself. So let's turn it off and uh, what am I doing? Oh, turning off. Please wait. So I'll be back once this thing's cooled down and ready to be disassembled. All right, we'll start opening this up. First things first, I uh, hope that this is just paint. Ah. Yeah, latex paint that dripped down inside. <laughs> so, let's uh, get these screws out. It's like somebody painted their home theater and did it with the projector up so it's just five screws on the bottom and there we go and then got this one This one, I'm going to take the uh, lens cover off too. I've never opened one of these up before, so there's going to be a little bit of uh, poking and prodding and twisting and whatnot. What the heck happened there? Oh, that's how it was a mount. Somebody epoxied it? Jeez. There. Well, might as well take this top cover off, too. No. A little too big. Spring loaded. Alright, 
and we're going to take the cover off just to get it on the edges. And just give it a little lift, just a little clips, just a little pop loose, and the top comes off. Just like that. This I'm pretty sure, yeah, that goes down on top of the lamp, holding the lamp down. This pin here, yeah, that looks like it's hitting the uh, lamp switch. And then there's just a little cover to hide the focus and zoom. All right, now let's get the lamp out. Now I do see some stuff that supports possibly this just being dirty. I really hope those little stars that we saw are just the uh, are just dust and not a bad DMD because the DMDs, yeah, 150 or so, it'd be worth doing. Because this, you know, it's a fairly new projector, but that's the problem. Yeah, see, 2016 is the date on this lamp. Let's see that there. 1222. So, a little bit over two years old. Out of warranty. It is curious that the warranty is so short. Snap that. This is a OEM lamp. You know, even with a bunch of hours on it, that burner doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's got some usage in it, but it's not terrible. It is dirty, though. See all that? Ah, uh, you know what? I wonder if somebody did drywall work. See right here? See that? I think what we're going to do is we're going to tear it down and clean it. And then see if that spot goes away. Because that very well could be drywall dust. Now the fun part. How do we get it open? I took the two screws off on this in the bottom. But there's one here. Let's pop that guy out. Let's see if this faceplate gets loose yet. No, it's still there. I do see clip. Let's get that one out. Nope, not screw holes. Probably the screws coming up from the bottom. get this front off. All right, so pop these two screws out, and that doesn't really seem to do anything. We can see the lens at least, so that's kind of cool. So instead, I'm going to now take this back panel off. So like I said, I'm not really sure how this comes apart. I can't find a service manual yet. I'm going to have to uh, dig a little deeper tonight to see if I can find the service manual. Obviously, it's not a Phillips, but once you get them loose, 
kind of, uh, it'll grab it enough to turn. Or just use a five millimeter uh, hex. All right, I guess these guys too. clips that roll in. So let's see if I can roll it out. What I'm trying to do is pull out and up, which unfortunately clipped that one back in. Alright, that let that panel out. It's still not what I'm looking for. I just want to make sure there's no other screws that I missed. Nope. Let's see. No, it's just clipped. Front still hasn't come off. Mm. Yeah, so this piece has to come off first, and yeah, I think it's dropping drywall dust everywhere. Sometimes there's little spots where you can release the clips. Ooh, like that. Okay, so I went in right here and popped that side loose, release that one. So hopefully I can demonstrate it on this side. Right in here, get between the gap. Just kind of push. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna see if it all comes up together. Yeah, it does, okay. And then we have a wire. Oh, uh, we have a wire going to the front. That's for the, uh, for that cover, I assume. Oh no, that's for IR, that's an infrared, oops. Sometimes they have a door switch for that slider on the front. This one doesn't have that. So there you go. There's the inside of this. It is separate pieces. We could pull it apart. Um, I should probably put that screw back in. Yep, as I drop the buttons. going to put this back in since it doesn't need to be out. All right. So let's set the cover off to the side. I just watched a dust bunny roll out of it. All right. 
so now we are in like Flynn. I don't know who I copied that from. That's where the buttons usually sit. Boy, a lot of interesting construction methods. You can see the buttons just push through and then hit the, uh, the actual buttons there. So I'm going to move that. This is bent. I don't know if that was me or if that was like that. But it is pretty dusty. You can see it all here. I'm really hoping that's what we're seeing. But I also see dust. Let me slide this fan out of the way so you guys can see. See the heat sink? Watch. This thing is dirty. Not filthy, but it's dirty. Alright, well, let's now take the uh, main board out. That's going to be a few machine screws. that are not magnetic. This must be... This is, oh no, they're magnetic. Just don't have a very heavily magnetized tip. Alright, will that do it? Yes. Alright, that shield's off. Let's set that over there. I'm going to fix that and there's the ROM it says it's a W1110 so it must be using the software from another one let's unplug the lamp blower fan let's unplug I don't know what fan that is fan 1 maybe or fan 2 they just have it labeled as a Jack, J something. Color wheel sensor. Color wheel drive. Exhaust fan. It's J36. Power supply fan. J37. Speaker. This is ballast right there, so the power must be just, uh, the power's right here, coming up. And then these two screws that connect it to the DMD. I really hope that fixes it, the cleaning, because I, I'd really hate to tell somebody a two-year-old projector has a bad DLP chip. You can see I just twist and lift, and then... Take out the third screw that I neglected. There we go. There's the underside. The power goes in here. The power gets processed over here. And that's the connector to the uh, DMD. Now we're down on the inside of things. <clears throat> this frame is over the power supply and the ballast, which is part of that main board, maybe. Let's see. So I want to take this out to clean it. That's why we're going in this far. Normally, I'd say we clean it as it sits.
always the fun part, finding where all the screws are. Here we are. There is the guts. That is the weirdest ballast I've ever seen. It's right here. It's an Osram Compact. PTVIP05 Compact by Osram. It's 240 watt. In fact, I'm going to take it out so you can see it. I don't really need to take it out for what I'm doing, but how often do you get to see a tiny compact ballast? Unplug the lamp wire. That's the ballast right there. That's the whole thing. It's the same general design, just uh, made a little more smartly, I guess. Power goes in here. That's the uh, 380N, the control to the brain, and all the switching MOSFETs and output inductor. It's pretty cool. Now we'll put it back in. In fact, I'm uh, considering offering a heavily discounted repair service for my viewers. If, uh, if you happen to subscribe to my channel and you're having a projector problem that you really don't want to send to your local repair shop and you don't mind paying for the uh, shipping back and forth and uh, obviously parts, I'm considering doing the actual labor part for free as long as I can shoot a video so if uh, anybody out there is interested or likes that idea let me know I uh, haven't decided yet but I'm leaning towards it I think it would be a, a good way to get more repair videos out there for people to see as well as help out some folks that are trying to save a buck you know all I'd ask is that you cover any of the expenses and I will uh, give you my labor for free basically Here's the lamp blower fan. This is the usual suspect in a lot of projector problems. Hopefully you can see all that dust in there. It's pretty bad. You can see it in there too. So I'm definitely going to be cleaning those. And now we're going to loosen up the screws in here. Spin it around so you get a better view. I'm going to set up an overhead camera soon. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. I had some uh, minor surgery a week and a half, two weeks ago, and kind of still recovering. One, two, and there should be... There it is. And the third one. All right, we're gonna have to clean the whole thing, but this, this is where I think the issue is. So let me go get the uh, air compressor set up and uh, we'll take care of that next. Now with these fans, you have to be careful. Hit them too much air, it'll spin too fast and they can explode. I like to hold it so it doesn't spin. Quick little blasts, both sides. A little more constant. There we go, that's clean. A little duct. All right, so you can see that's much cleaner now. The only other place 
I need to check is inside. There's a couple ways to do that. I can take this off. We can go in through the back. I think we're going to go in through the back. It looks okay. Look at it a little closer. Yeah, I don't see any stuck pixels. Shine some light on it. You should see little stars there. And I don't see any. Part number for this, if for some reason you need it for yourself, is uh, 1910-6039E. Then inside looks all right. Some dust, not a lot, but some. That mirror over there has some, so I'm going to uh, get that out of there. You can't really see it, but I did get most of that out. So let's get shim back in I'll set this back on so we don't get any more dust getting inside I think this may have just been dirty now putting these back on you don't want to use this power screwdriver do it by hand all right so I put these back in crisscross pattern to tighten them, keep everything even. I'm just going to uh, hop off camera for a moment and blast out the inside of this. Be right back. All right, it's all clean. <clears throat> now let's start putting it back together. Optic module. Yeah. Now on my drill, I find that three on the clutch works really well for plastic threads. Oh, that's not the wrong hole. There we go. stage that wire there so that let me put the main board in it'll be easier to get to so now we'll get the sub assembly tray the trick with this is lining up well everything but the uh, plug, the AC jack, has little fingers that go down over it. And of course, the ground. I wonder if this is made by Delta. It's what the way the part numbers are. Could be. I wish I knew more about the uh, rest of the manufacturers out there that build these.
All right. Those screws are all in. Oh. See, this is what happens. Making a video, thinking about the video. And then we forget things like lamp blower fans, which are pretty important. Now we could leave that ground wire on like I just did. Now, if I hadn't put that back in, nothing would have happened because the temperature the sensor or the, this guy, this fuse, this just will interrupt the AC so the thing just wouldn't turn on. It would act like it was unplugged. All right, make sure that stuff's all out of the way. And we'll try this again. There we go, color wheel, fans, all that stuff's out of the way, looks good. All right, so now for the main board, you have to pay attention to this connector and that tower. That's the uh, power. So we'll line it up by eye with the screw holes, then what I do is I look in through here and make sure the pins are lined up, which they are. They should be. And then that should also line up the DLP chip right here, which it did. So let's put these two in. Sure, none of our wires are pinched, which they're not. And then this one. The one I almost forgot last time. <laughs> All right, so let's start plugging some wires back in. Let's start over here. connector connection side up There we go. That was tough. Then we put one side in this little clip. 
and then we'll route the rest in that heat sink like it was. And we take our sensor wire. Then over here, the uh, that fan. And then it's gonna route this for, for that fan. Our speaker clips under there, and then the control for the compact ballast. There we go. All right, so this is really enough to test it, and I think that's what we're going to do. So, stand by, I'm going to move all this around and get it set up so that we can fire it up. All right, so I have my screwdriver wedging the uh, button in place using the same black image. Color wheel fired up, fans are all coming on. I'm supposed to, this one's not. Maybe it's just not supposed to yet. That fan's not running. But one thing I am not seeing is that little, that little star. A lot of color bleed from the shadow, from everything not blocking from the lens, but. Hmm, maybe. Good. We're on PC, that's good. Now all that other stuff, that's all bleed over from the exposed light in here. But I don't see focuses all the way that way. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to see what it looks like with a, well, let's put it back together the rest of the way and see if that goes away. That looks pretty much the same though, I bet that's a bad chip. Wow. We're dirty. <laughs> Didn't move. Well, let's close it up and see what it looks like because if I need a new DMD we're gonna order it and I'll have the guy bring it back in because it's functional as it sits so I'm gonna put it back together and be right back This folds on, I guess you could say.
good. <clears throat> now for the top. <clears throat> Pardon me. Screw that back in. All right. Put our infrared wire back in. Oh, didn't want to put that down yet. trying to be honest with you let's put this back on and maybe if there is a piece of dust or something in one of the lenses that's not a a DMD, maybe we can move the lens to uh, get it out of the way. There we go. Uh, let's put our dirty plastic cover back on. screw and then we'll put the uh, lamp door on and then the bottom screws and then we'll fire it up again and don't forget about these guys on the springs Last but not least. All right, they're all back in. Let's put the uh, lens cover back on. So like I said, the projector still works for the most part. It just has that weird pixel that does not seem to be dust. All right, so one more, one more power up. And we'll turn the uh, lights off too. 
because there was a lot of light bleed over. can see it has a, an okay picture. Um, I did see what might be more dust that's actually inside this lens assembly. So I'm going to do a little bit of research. We might open it up and try to clean the inside of this lens. Uh, what I may do first though is just have the customer pick it up, try it, and see if everything looks good for their use. If it is, we'll let it go. If not, we'll get inside there because I'm not 100% that that DMD is bad. So we'll, uh, we'll get back into it. So again, if you have any questions, put them down below or email me. And as always, thank you for watching.